Hello, welcome back for another video of Back on Ark Survival Ascended. And today I wanted to showcase the easiest and best way to farm element in the game right now. Of course, the only official map we can play right now is the island. There are no tech creatures that spawn in the wild, so there's no option of crafting unstable element in our own inventory anymore. So the only way to farm element is through defeating bosses. And today I'm going to focus on one boss and one difficulty, which is going to be the Mega Pificus. It is the weakest boss out of all three, having less than half of the dragon's health when on Gamma difficulty. The Megapificus can be defeated for 40 element on Gamma difficulty, 110 on Beta difficulty, and 220 on Alpha. And I'll be running this one on beta. Summoning requirements include Artifact of the Brute, located in the Easy Underwater Cave. Artifact of the Devourer, located in Carno Island Cave at the northeastern part of the map. And finally, Artifact of the Pack, which is located in the Lower South Cave. All three of these caves are relatively easy if you use the right tactics and creatures going in, with the Underwater Cave being the hardest out of the three, which for me can be questionable if it is actually the Easy Underwater Cave. I have heard that this cave can potentially overspawn massive amounts of creatures and recently for me i'm beginning to believe the rumors as i've been having to deal with massive armies of megalodons but i have still tactically beaten this cave with a high level bazzy and a high level pack of seven megalodons all with good saddles and decent stats i have also navigated my way through the army of megs with a dipper callus managed to grab the artifact and get out although it did take me 10 tries and nine dead diplos later but they are cannon fodder at the end of the day and you don't have to go in with anything so you don't have to worry about losing all your good stuff as they do give you breathable oxygen when riding them but i have also heard that this cave wouldn't be like this on official pve servers so please do feel free to let me know in the comments of how you're running this cave and if possible be sure to bring an otter with you in these caves they can hold more than one of the same artifact in their own inventory which can save you a lot of time and numerous trips in retrieving these artifacts boss tributes you'll be needing for the mega pipicus beta difficulty five megalania toxin five megalodon teeth five spinosaurus sails five ferrazino claws and five phylocolio hook claws most are relatively easy to get, however the Spino is quite rare. They can be found roaming most rivers and lakes, and so are the Megalanias, which are only found in caves and are quite rare at that. But what I will say is if you tame a mating pair of Megalanias, every time you pop up babies, they will include two Megalania toxin in their inventory, which is extremely useful. These requirements are the difference between day and night when comparing the Dragon Boss requirements. The Dragon Boss requires four artifacts, two of those being the hardest snow cave and the hardest underwater cave. The Dragon does reward the most element per difficulty but it is a far more difficult boss fight but if playing in a tribe it's probably the one to run now back to the megapificus beta there are two different ways i'd recommend running this boss both being pretty easy if you have the stuff to do it of course the first method is going to be with a ferrazino army with the support of a uteranus which you'll be wanting to ride this is by far the easiest and quickest method of the two as all you really need is a decent breeding line of ferrazinos the ones i have here were fully in printed babies all leveled up to 20 to 22,000 health averaging around 600 to 650 damage with a few of them almost hitting 700 all ferrazinas have around 10 sweet veggie cakes inside their inventory and all have primitive saddles just to showcase how doable this method can be for the majority of players once inside the boss arena keep your ferrazinas in the terminal location use your ut to ride up to the mega pipicus and get its attention preferably by shooting it in the nostril baiting it down the steps once he takes the bait you want to make sure your ferrazinas will circle him i usually whistle them to go past him and then whistle them to attack him which will make him the meat in our sandwich a lot of people do use rexes for this boss fight however i prefer the ferrazino as they're more viable for the dragon boss fight later on as they can heal with sweet veggie cakes which also means you can focus on breeding one dino type and not two and the fight is pretty much smooth sailing from here all you have to do is stay on your ut and use the courage raw to buff your ferrazinos and they'll take care of the rest for you i did actually hop off my ut a few times just to use my compound bow but honestly you don't want to be doing that if he throws a boulder and it hits you in the face you're gonna instantly die this boss fight only takes about five minutes once inside the arena so it is extremely quick and by just looking at the ferrazino's health after the fight you can still see they're around half health and remember this is with primitive saddles so they will beat him with no problem the second method is going to be with a kangaroo i have with me 1100 shotgun rounds a 270 percent damage pump action shotgun and a 263 
3% damage one as a backup, just in case. And with both of these methods, I'd recommend bringing some fur armor as it is extremely cold in this arena. Personally, I always bring good flak armor and eat ice cubes for breakfast like an absolute beast. I will most likely slowly freeze to death in the arena, but I have got medical brews with me to heal through it. The kangaroo itself is nothing special and has a 70 armor saddle just in case, but ideally we don't plan on getting hit in this one. I do have extra shotgun rounds in its inventory, however I definitely don't think you'd need more than 1000 bullets for this. Once inside the arena, your focus will be these ledges here, and you'll be wanting to jump your kangaroo up to any one of these ledges. As you can see I failed miserably at first getting up to the ledge. It's much more difficult trying to jump up there from below the top of the steps. Ideally you want to go up the steps like I do, and jump up there from the higher ground. Once in the air you can press the jump key at any point, which will stop the kangaroo's momentum, allowing you to land on your desired ledge much easier. Park your kangaroo at the edge of the ledge. You don't even have to dismount as you can use your weapons while riding. And that is all you need to do. You just rain down on the Megapithecus until it's dead. This method does take a very long time. However, it might be a more viable option in PvP if you're trying to stay under the radar, not needing to bring a small army with you. That is if you can actually get inside the artifact caves on PvP servers. This is a great method if you don't have access to a strong boss fighting army at the cost of crafting a lot of ammo and needing a high quality shotgun. This method does take three times longer. I managed to take down the boss with around three minutes remaining and I used roughly just over 600 rounds to kill it. So I definitely took way too much ammo with me. Of course, if you have a better shotgun than 270%, then you're good. You won't even need 600 rounds, but I would still recommend bringing at least 800 depending on the damage of your pump action shotgun. And one final thing to point out, if you are looking to run the alpha difficulty and are looking for a high quality ferris or rec saddle blueprint rec saddles can be found in a variety of different places best places to find yourself a rec saddle would be red lamb beacons and the red swamp cave loot crates which is the cave located in the redwoods right next to the redwoods lake and if you're looking for high quality ferrazino saddles these can also rarely be found in red lamb beacons and the only other place to my knowledge are the red drops from the hard snow cave which is probably the most difficult land cave to run but this crate is probably your best bet to find a ferrazino saddle and if you're interested in a ut saddle it also drops those too. And if you are curious where to find the best loot or what types of loot can be found in certain crates, please do feel free to check out this video. I believe it to be very useful as I even find myself going back to watch it for reference as a lot of the time I do forget what types of crate drop what types of loot. And the video actually helps me out quite a lot. Link will be in the description of the video and in a pinned comment. And that is going to be the end of the video for today. I hope you all enjoyed it and I hope it was helpful to you all. And if it was helpful in any way, please do consider liking commenting and subscribing for more content like this i'd really appreciate it it really helps me out and these videos do take a long time to make i find myself saying that a lot but it's true and i'll catch you all in the next one take care goodbye